We'll give you the latest on the Colonial Pipeline ransomware attacks. So Matt, tell us about this um, attack on the pipeline in the U.S. All right, so uh, buckle in. This is going to be a little bit of uh, an information dump. And we are taping on Tuesday the 11th. Uh, by the time we go to air, some new updates may have come out, but I'll do my best to represent the story as we know it today. So on Friday, May 7th of this year, uh, there was a ransomware attack against Colonial Pipeline. Now, this is a Georgia-based company. They operate pipelines that connect refineries in the Gulf Coast all the way up the uh, southern and eastern coast of the United States. So roughly 55,000 miles of pipeline that moves gas, uh, diesel, jet fuel, home heating oil, a lot of different stuff. And some of these pipelines have been around since the 1960s. So big company, might not have heard of it until this week, uh, if you don't actually keep an eye on that sector, but um, everyone's aware of it now. Uh, so they, they move about 45% of the total fuel consumed on the East Coast. Uh, 2.5 million barrels a day and they had a ransomware attack and they shut down their pipeline as a precaution at least that's the story we're hearing from outside uh, to prevent whatever was happening to them from spreading to the operational parts of the pipeline uh, from the, comp the compromised network to sort of segment it so where do we stand on this today so the fbi has identified this attacker malware as dark side now, DarkSide is both a attacker group and an attacker malware. Uh, FBI was probably intentionally just saying the malware is DarkSide as opposed to blaming it on the group. But you can draw your own conclusions, I suppose. Um, DarkSide does use their own malware. They do have a reputation and they have responded on their blog uh, to the, the newfound attention that they've gotten themselves. And they seem to be claiming that this is the work of an affiliate or someone who had hired them to do the work and not their own, which is a weird thing to say, honestly. They try to represent themselves as some sort of uh, ransomware as a service organization. Um, one way or the other, they are involved with this, is, is how it seems. Colonials in the remediation phase, working to bring their IT and pipeline back on in incremental fashion. Uh, they are working with what they said was a, a professional organization but I believe uh, FBI or another government organization has stated that definitively it is Mandiant who is working on this. And the government is providing support to uh, Colonial as they work through this on their own with Mandiant. Um, neither Colonial nor the FBI has stated definitively one way or the other if anyone's paid a ransom. So any questions at this point? It, it's It's crazy story that just the way everything I've been reading about it, Matt. And one of the things that I found really interesting was that Darkseid really seemed to come out and say, um, essentially, that uh, we're going to do our attempt at better moderation in the future. We don't want to be responsible for uh, taking out, you know, uh, in, uh, infrastructure or, you know, impacting. And, and I found that statement kind of interesting because I said, how, how do you determine what's a good target versus what's a bad I've, target? I've read about this, and from what I've heard, they seem to have some level of a code of ethics, which is a weird thing to say, that they won't attack hospitals or schools or essential functions. They, they intended to attack only companies that have you know, that make tons of money and can afford to pay these sorts of ransoms. Apparently, either they got their wires crossed and they accidentally did it, or somebody who works for them or is a business partner of theirs accidentally did it, uh, or they're, they're just not being truthful about this whole thing. Either way, um, it's a bad situation to be in. So the government is has made a, sorry, so the government, the U.S. government, has a regional emergency declaration that allows alternate transportation of petroleum via trucks. I think extended hours for truck drivers to allow uh, trucks to cover some of the, the the fuel that could not be carried by the pipeline. So at least the, the shortages are somewhat relieved. 
Um, this is going to be effective from 5 to 9 until the emergency ends or until June 8th, whichever is sooner. Um, FBI is involved. Energy Department is involved. DHS, uh, CISA is involved. Um, the impact is something I haven't been able to completely nail down yet and I think is one of the things that's going to change rapidly from day to day if it becomes worse. Um, I saw that there was uh, shortages reported in seven states. Um, the national gas price average moved up to $2.97 a gallon, which is the highest since 2018. Um, some reports of panic buying. I mean, if you read in the news that a pipeline is shut down, you are going to assume there's going to be a shortage. Uh, right. that may or may not have been the case uh, before people started buying, but there, it may be now. Um, something that I really have to do more research on to definitively say whether we're facing a gasoline shortage, but it's been only a couple of days. One of the, the luckier things, uh, which again, weird to say, is that COVID-19 has definitely cut back on the number of people commuting, a number of people moving around, uh, going into offices. So the, the, the demand for energy is actually lower. Um, this right. could have happened at a worse time, to be honest. So yeah, it, it, it's interesting the article and and how uh, we've had that fear. Um, I, I, actually, we as in the U.S., but I guess all over the world, whereas that fear of you know um, hackers infiltrating our national grids, you know any grid, you know whether it's power, your pipeline, your you know anything like that. That, that has been that fear, and now you're having the hackers shut down a pipeline. So, you know, what's next? A, a blackout, you know, those type of things. And so I think it just, you know, puts into perspective that, um, you know, the U.S. has to get ahead of this um, and also, you know, try to look at their particular infrastructure and make sure it doesn't happen to them. For sure. And if you take the story on its face value that, this is just a, a criminal operation and not uh, an advanced persistent threat group behind this. Um, this also could have gone worse. You know, if, if the objective was to just cripple the pipeline, uh, they probably could have done this, gotten farther and, and achieved their objective. But instead, they chose to ransomware the entire system. They've taken it offline, but it's nothing as it's not nearly as permanent or as, as completely damaging as if, it, as if the pipeline had been forced offline through some sort of cyber physical attack, um, something a little more. And I'm not saying it's not devastating. I'm saying it could have been more devastating. I hope I'm getting yeah. that across. Right. <laughs> yes. It speaks a little bit to, though, how in the last few years we've seen kind of a shift in, you know, there's, there's a much more... Uh, target towards ransomware uh, with it just a steady increase of whether it's the variants or the amount of news stories that we see of almost any type of whether it's a infrastructure or just a small store uh, you, you're reading more and more stories about ransomware so it's interesting to see just how much it's propagating and because it's there to kind of balloon up to the front to tell you hey pay this ransom uh, just how much quicker uh, you find out about it too. Oh, sure, because it makes itself known. I mean, it has to, because you need to be aware of it and pay the ransom. Um, right. That's another thing to say about DarkSight is that their technique, uh, as the organization, uh, DarkSight, and not necessarily the malware, but your organization has the, uses the technique of you know, encrypting all of the data, but also saving off a copy to blackmail people with, uh, to tell them, you know, if you don't pay up, uh, if, you know, some people will try and clean up the malware themselves, try and recover from backup. This extra step is, which has become pretty popular in the last year, to try and extort them for money and say, if you don't you know, pay us, we're also going to release the data that you don't have control over anymore, uh, which um, has happened in the past. In fact, they make a point of posting those companies on their site and say, well, they didn't work with us, so here you go. Here's all the copies of their data. Um, wild stuff. Uh, I did read a Krebs article today. Um, Krebs on security did post what appear to be screenshots of a conversation with the dark side ransomware crew. Um, 
and their discussions and negotiations. So they do seem to be businesslike in their their dealings, um, making guarantees that they won't you know share their data and apparently following through on them. It's it's wild. Um, so I think we we still have a lot of unanswered questions. Uh, again, FBI stated this is the dark side malware, not necessarily the crew. So not really attribution. Um, we don't know whether or not the ransom was paid, but that may that's a question. Is that up? Is that really the business of anybody besides the people involved? I'm not sure. Um, ultimately, the biggest concern is getting that pipeline back up and running, and that seems to be already um, moving forward. So, however, that's been achieved, uh, it seems that this this may this may be a short-lived crisis, and hopefully. Uh, the pipeline is back up and running before any major impact occurs uh, to the point where we have a shortage or a spike in gas prices or any other side effects. Yeah, great article. Um, it, yeah, it just it, it just puts in perspective that, you know, uh, hackers are out, out there just, you know, uh, looking for the next biggest thing. And it's, it's always uh, some type of monetary motivation. You know, with these, 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 well, most hackers, you know, it's, it's, it's the motivation behind it is money. Um, and so I think that, that, I think they just need to get ahead of it. I, I think they really do. Mm. And I, I think you're right that this yeah. is going to be a tipping point where now this, this has had a real, a real measurable effect outside of just the, the victim organization. And I think, I have read that there were plans uh, under the Biden administration to try and do something about ransomware. I don't know what the plan is, uh, but it seems to be at least an area of focus. I'm glad to hear that.